What's up gang, Canadian Computer Collector here, and boy am I excited about this one. My hair's a little bit nutty today because I bathe earlier in the day. This week, we're looking back at the machine my brother and I made for our dad for Christmas 2022. I had some modern hardware lying around and I didn't want it to just sit on the shelf, so we made our pop his very first dedicated gaming PC. So let's get into it. As with any PC build, you need a case. And the case we have indeed. This is a Thermaltake Landbox light that I picked up off a guy from a local buy cell. Not to be confused with a local guy that I picked up off a buy cell. Either way, it's a classic shuttle style case that likely housed an early dual core machine or even a Pentium or Athlon build. This one was easy to disassemble because while it's not necessarily modular, everything is quite convenient. All the parts on the case have a home, but accessing them is a breeze for the most part. Being a fun and funky custom PC case, I was surprised at how little consideration was given for air cooling on the chassis. Granted, it's a small form factor, only having a spot for a 95 millimeter fan on the front and spots for two 40 millimeter fans on the back doesn't seem like a lot, especially for an older case. Luckily, modern hardware does a great job of cooling itself independently, so I'm not gonna wet myself over this one. In fact, I'm gonna save my urine for another crisis. My goal with this thing was to break it down entirely, because we're gonna build a computer in its bones, and then break down those bones, and sand those bones down to bare metal, then ship it off for paint and build it all over again one last time as it starts life as a new machine. So back to the build, only a few screws stood betwixt me and the front I.O. ports, but the power and reset buttons brought more friends to the fight. Taking these things apart wasn't bad, though I did end up pressing a bit too hard at one point and breaking a tab that holds the clear light lens in place. Moving on to the grill, this part was quite brittle, despite being made of metal. The tabs were really thin and needed to be gently rocked, and we ended up breaking one of the less important ones on the way out. The CD drive bay doors were not a challenge at all and came out quicker than the farts that leave my body. And this little tab had to come out, as we're gonna add some USB 3.0 ports to the front of this case. Now removing goopy junk, from metal is one of my favorite things to do. So pulling this decal off was a breeze. I used my nail to get rid of most of it, then hit the residue with a bit of lighter fluid on a paper towel. I also decided I was on a roll and would remove the rest of the goopy junk from this case, including this ancient decal goop stain, as well as these little bumper pads that in the grand scheme of things are not really earning their rent. After that, it was time to gather up my clothes, thank the audience and walk off stage. I'm just kidding, of course, but we need to make a little space because we do have some work to do. I also love to wipe down tables and then watch the cleaning liquid evaporate on fast forward, so maybe that's what I was doing? So with the clean table, it's time to lay down my towel so I can start my second dance number. And if you're Canadian, you know what that means. And with clean parts, it's time to actually start this build. So right now, I'm piecing this together to find out what's missing. And right off the bat, it's fans. So off we go to Memory Express, in the midst of a cold, cold Canadian winter. Or in this case, mmm, rye. With three new fans in hand, we can start the mock-up process. Back home, the fans go in only with enough screws to get an idea of fitting. The 95mm goes up front and the 240mm in the back. Remember, this is the mock-up process, so we don't necessarily need to put every single screw in place. Next up, we need a motherboard and processor like I need a functional spine. For this build, we're going to use an MSI B150M board with a quad-core i5-6500 CPU and a stock Intel cooler. We're also going to pair that with a 700-watt Cooler Master power supply that came from a machine that my brother picked up for the $250 gaming PC video. This case clearly had someone attempt to mod it at one point, so we're going to remove that excess metal and file the edges down to make more legroom for our chunky graphics card. And speaking of GPUs, we got lucky and managed to pick up a one-year-old 1660 Super for only a hundred Canadian dollars. I still have not seen a deal this good on any of the buy cells since, so that was a big win. But after putting a stick of RAM in and trying to troubleshoot it a little bit, I still couldn't get it to boot. So it was time that I decided to call my brother. Man, you've got a lot of cool <laughs> but also you have a lot of <laughs> Okay, so- Hopefully I'm still injured when you move. This is- <laughs> Ready? Something, let's jump it. Um, there you go. It. CPU or memory change. Hell yeah, we got display. Hey, holy crap, okay. All uh, right. Now let's try with the graphics card. So for some reason it worked. Maybe my brother carries a heavy electromagnetic field. I don't know. Yeah, ready? Yeah. Fire it up. Fire it up. Bleh. Hands on the card are turning. Oh, yes! These wheels keep on turning! 
I'm gonna keep on burning. Okay, well, let's log in and just have a look. Wow, so, you, um, it works fine. Okay, well, this is the one terabyte Samsung Evo 860 I was using until I upgraded to the NVMe as my C drive. Anyway, let's shut her down now that we know it works, and then let's pop it on this and see if it'll still boot. And what is scrambling? <laughs> That's when you scream vomit, apparently, according to the side effects on a uh, medicine website. <laughs> and now that we've experienced that horrible sound, we can start to once again attempt to put this computer back into its case to make sure it will actually start. While it's in there, it's important to make sure this thing works in the case because just the night before when I was working on it, it would not. Thankfully, with Stack's help and his potentially heavier electromagnetic field, Things went much better. We're clear. That's the disk drive. That's promising. And as boring as that sounded, that was a win. The computer works. So now it's time to take it apart again. In this case, pun intended. I decided to cut out a bunch of footage and speed the video up because Lord knows you don't need to see it taken apart again in slow motion. You're welcome. But what comes next? Once this miserable block of metal is in pieces, we then get to sand the paint off every single chassis piece. But for that part, I've saved a little treat for you, the viewer. So mask on. At first I sanded the clear coat off and thought, good enough, that was very hard work. I then watched a TV show and realized how lazy I was being and decided to go all the way. So with a ton of elbow grease and a placenta of sandpaper, over the next three evenings I sanded every single piece of the chassis down to bare metal. And since this process is tedious and somewhat long, and I promised you a treat, I will now read a passage from Ian Fleming's 1953 hit novel, Casino Royale. You'd better call it the Molotov cocktail after the one you tasted this afternoon. They sat down. Bond laughed. I see that spot-marked X has been roped off and they're making cars take a detour over the pavement. I hope it hasn't frightened away any of the big money. All right, enough of that. We now have ourselves a set of clean bare metal PC chassis pieces, and it is now time to prime. Set up at my window, I've got all my fans going and a can of beautiful Rust-Oleum white primer. Now, I wasn't able to find self-etching primer locally, and we were in a bit of a time crunch, but I think it turned out pretty decently anyway. All the pieces came out smooth, and the painting process wasn't all that bad. It stunk, but it wasn't that bad. And at this point, it was time to hit each piece with a super fine grit sanding, and then some of our main color. That is until I hurt my back. All right, so I hurt myself, and uh, we are now filming at Stace's place, finishing off the paint job on our Christmas PC build for our father. We're doing this in an attic that nobody uses in the winter, and this is how you spray paint stuff in minus 20 degree weather. So you notice he's doing things in short, quick bursts, so it doesn't build up and run. Last thing you want are the runs. <clears throat> yeah, especially not when you're injured. Blow your back out while you're blowing out your backside. <laughs> so I really have to send a heartfelt shout out to my brother for this one. It was so cold outside when I hurt myself and we had nowhere else to paint. So he came through and let us paint in his attic. So thank you so much, Stace. That was key. And you know what? I think it turned out pretty good. Let's take a first look at our finished painted pieces. Now these were primed white with about three coats, and then each of them received two coats of red and two coats of satin clear. I think they look amazing. Also, RIP to the CCC 24 inch iMac. First order of business on this freshly painted case is a set of new rubber feet, which I grabbed from Home Depot when I initially bought our paint supplies. Following the feet comes a 95 millimeter fan we picked up from Memory Express. And I just want to take a moment to say, I honestly cannot get over how satisfying it is to rebuild a computer after you've just cleaned everything and painted it. <laughs> so next, these little slot loader screws go into the side of this drive bay cage and then we're on to the front panel because there's a lot of work to do here. First things first, the clear lens goes back in and a bit of super glue is dabbed onto the broken tab with a toothpick. Next up, the power and reset buttons need to find their homes with their respective springs and screws. Once everything feels right, we then place the wiring harness-like piece over the top and screw it down. That holds and connects everything where it needs to be. Following that, we're installing the side slash front IO panel, which is only held in place with two 
two longer screws, easy peasy. And the CD drive bay doors went in as easy as they came out, which if I remember correctly, was as quick as a fart leaves my body. With our front panel all assembled, we can start feeding the wires through the front of the chassis and snap the internal speaker into its place. And like a drawbridge on an old English castle, we raised the front panel. We dipped the machine up to throw a filter and a grill back on it. You may remember this grill was brittle AF from before, so I was very careful while putting it back together. Looks super clean once installed though. Next up is our USB 3.0 panel for the front of the case. At this point in time, I am really starting to dig the red and black theme we have going on. Our dad is old school, so we opted to install an actual optical drive so he can use CDs and DVDs on this thing. To position it properly in front of the optical bay doors, we needed to take it out and finesse it a bit, but eventually we found the right spot and it worked perfectly. I want to mention while we're reassembling this thing, we built it a lot like a custom car. So we put it together in its raw state before sending the pieces out for paint and then reassembling it again. One important thing to keep in mind during the mock-up phase is that paint does add layers, as minuscule as they may seem. And those layers can make it harder to rebuild your computer after the fact. Even with this build, since we were under a time crunch and I injured myself, I wasn't able to wet sand after each layer of primer, paint, and clear coat. And in some cases, it did make it harder to reassemble. When mocking up your machines, keep that in mind and avoid any tight tolerances or small gaps that may create difficulties after paint. Getting back to the build, the stock MSI I.O. plate just got installed and it goes beautifully with the red and black theme. Our fans are looking great too, and it's now time for the B150M motherboard. I grabbed some fresh screws from Papa's own screw kit and screwed them into place. After that, I installed the 1660 Super and screwed it down on both sides. I also installed our USB 3.0 controller board for the front slots that we added. Then our newly painted expansion slot cover, which I wish had a stainless finish like the others, but alas, it was painted originally, so we had to paint it red. I think it's looking pretty snazzy, if you ask me. My next move was to plug in the fan splitter running the 2mm fans, then it was on to the power supply installation. And this thing fit, and I knew that because we did a mock-up. But even during the mock-up, it gave me a hard time, and I really had to press it into place to make sure the screws fit. That said, Looks pretty dang good once it's all in place. This little tray pull is a great thing to have on a case like this, so I saved it and put it back on, and we're basically just rounding out the final steps of reassembly. And this is it, pretty much. Uh, nothing's plugged in and it's missing the side panels, but this is the state we're gonna present it to our father in because at this point in the game, Christmas is tomorrow, and with everything going on, we won't have time to set it up for him until a couple days later anyway. And I think it looks awesome, so let's do it. Fast forward now to setup. Here we are putting the thing together at our dad's place and making sure it actually runs for him. We also needed to add a couple things like a drive caddy to hold the SSD and the laptop HDD. We also need to grab some RAM from the store, you know, little things. And it did feel like there were a lot of things working against us, but eventually, after a long struggle, we got everything working. Join him, dad, join him. Dance, <laughs> live. <laughs> Needless to say, I was pretty stoked when it all worked out. The last thing on my plate now were the side panels. I needed to fix them and figure out what I wanted to do with them. I didn't want to keep them clear because the breaks would be too obvious, so I decided to fix them with chunky super glue, sand them down, and spray them black. I also needed some screws to hold the windows in place, so off I went to Home Depot to grab screws and paint. Wearing what are essentially tie-dye Holstein cattle pants and an oversized Simpsons Mr. Plow hoodie, I boldly made my way to the spray paint shelf. Not even God himself would have mistaken me for a productive member of society. But back home, the glue was dry and it was time to sand my b off. I made quick work of the tape holding one of the brakes in place and sanded down not just the glue, but also the outer layers so the paint would adhere better to the plastic. The sanding was kicking up a real dust fuss, so I pulled out some old flyers to work over top of without realizing they were from about 1996. Actually, there's an ad for Wings of Glory there, if you can see. I also used a cylindrical file to ensure each of the screw holes on the windows would fit a screw well enough that I could paint it and still not have any issues. After that, I cleaned them up using soap and water, let them dry, then sprayed them black. Once the windows were finished, I hopped in my car and headed down to my dad's store where the computer now lives. He and I pulled the thing apart and installed both windows while trying our best not to scratch the paint, which was not easy. This computer's quite sassy now. Quite sassy now. It's not like being taken apart. But that said, our hard work prevailed and we managed to get all 16 of the required screws and nuts into place to hold the beautiful new black satin windows in its frame. 
And that is basically it, folks. I can't believe it. This computer threw up a ton of roadblocks for us, but we are finally done, and I think it looks amazing. The red and black paint with stainless slash chrome style fasteners looks so clean and reminds my brother and I of the 67 Mustang Coupe our dad drove all of our childhood as his winter car. Only our dad would drive a 67 Mustang in the winter. He is one of a kind and we love him. I was also pretty relieved when it was all done and I let out a classic walk like an Egyptian victory dance. Did you know you can support this channel not just by liking and subscribing, uh, which would be fantastic, but also by joining the Patreon. For only $1 a month, you can get your name in the credits of each video, and we are slowly adding more cool stuff there as time goes on. If you aren't into Patreon, we do buy me a coffee as well. If you want to check them out, links are in the description. Be sure to check that out. And while I have your attention, I would like to thank our current patrons, who are Evan Grill, SK Link, Charlie from Oz, Larry Collins, Justin Morgan, Ron's Computer Vids, S. Shrek, or Shrek, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, Trina Conrad, Garth Beagle, Mac84, and my man Ethan Palomero. So once again, thank you everyone who subscribes to the Patreon, and if you're interested in supporting, check out the links below. Without further ado, so without further adieu, so without further adieu, so without further adieu, Thank you so much for tuning in. I, of course, am the Canadian Computer Collector. It has been mon plaisir. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Be sure to check out some of our older videos to see if there's anything you like. Maybe one of the videos above my hands right now. Where are my hands?